<laughs> Let's get started, man. You want to do Uniswap uh, first? Yeah, um, it's just a quick reminder uh, that the Uniswap sort of process that started a while ago for creating the Uniswap Foundation. It's on the last day left to vote, uh, on-chain vote. It's uh, the last thing that it's left to do for its approval. And I'm listening to myself. <laughs> so, you know. um, so yeah, basically that. And the vote ends in one day. So it's still passing with a 99% approval, 81.62 million votes. So I'm actually looking forward to see what will be the next action items that will happen. So I, this is what's just like a friendly reminder of this going on. Uh, we have covered this process for quite a while, but now it's at the end, yeah. There you go. And yeah, Synapse quick. Protocol will can be you, our next topic. Let's just quickly just troubleshoot the, the audio, make sure. So could you hear yourself at the tail end there, or was it fixed? It seems to have been fixed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just, I just, I wanted to point one thing out on it. So we have covered, and if you're watching on YouTube, we have covered this now. Obviously, it's moved on to its last phase, and the governance for every DAO is a little bit different. Um, Uni does do it on on chain, but they have it um, on their own. For, like they do their temp check and their consensus check on a snapshot, and they have their own, obviously, on chain vote for finalizing this. Um, we're talking, you know, obviously um, about seventy four million in capital, which is a significant sum that's going to be. Uh, provided this foundation uh, for them to execute on grants um and if you look at the vo the voters here you can see right sort of uh, it, it's just it's worth taking a look here right so a16 is 15 million uni uh, 20 percent of the support for this uh and then consensus is up there with another seven robert lesnar so it is it's sort of a who's who right um of uh of the Web3 space in support of this. So obviously it's well on its way here. Um, the, the, the bridge to the Synapse story was really um, that you see, like I'm observing this, on one hand you have uh, like shapeshift, okay? That a, almost over a year ago was no longer, you know, it, it gave up the centralized structure and in order to facilitate the handoff to the DAO, it did create a foundation. And so now the two exist and you know, coexist with the intention of dissolving the foundation when possible. You have other projects, um, again, Uniswap, Synapse, where you, you have, a, I guess, a DAO. In the case of Synapse, it's like, a, I think, a fully on-chain community, more or less, that built a bridge right, in the swapper that now is creating a foundation after the DAO launched. I just find these to be sort of interesting trajectories to observe. Um, and it's also, I think, a bit of a, uh, maybe, um, uh, I want to say it's related to the context of a bear market. Like if you're, let's put it this way, the premise of the Uniswap proposal um, is to centralize decision-making for the sake of efficiency. Like if we're boiling this entire thing down to its basic nuts and bolts, you want and and its efficiency to grow the ecosystem and distribute grant capital, but it's it it's basically saying doing this through the regular DAO governance is too much of a laborious process. Essentially, DAO governance doesn't work for grant making, so we're going to create a foundation to do that, and these are your supporters. Now. In the case of Synapse, I, I, it's a smaller scale. I'm saying this is a, more of a community launch protocol. This would be like, in a sense, launching a foundation to help steward one hive's ecosystem. Now that would be another step lower in terms of like market cap and size of the project. But in this case, you know, the reason being the reason d'etre for creating the foundation, I think, is to essentially increase efficiency around certain DAO like. Uh, operations, right? Yeah. Which I'm not yeah. saying this is a bad thing, right? We're here to identify these trends that we see that are happening and just to discuss them, right? I, I think it's definitely related to the Uniswap proposal. That's go for it, man. That's why I, I grouped the two together for, for today's show. Yeah. Um, so, Synapse Foundation, I mean, I, I will ask these questions. Um, I will ask this question like, how many Synapse projects do you know that? Yeah, so so they have a bridge. I looked into this because I had never used their product before. 
right? There are there are other competing products, kind of like HoneySwap. There's other competing DEXs, right? Um, but I, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know the but, total market cap. Yeah. Yeah, no, but be, be, besides besides that point, um, it seems that there are many. Like it, this is like the third or fourth Synapse name project that I hear about. So you have Synapse Network, which is also a bridge uh, multi chain cross chain technology space uh, that it seems to be more like um, corporation driven kind of thing. Then you have this one that we're talking about, uh, which is the Synapse Protocol, which is also a fork of Uniswap of some kind. Like it's the same aesthetic, um, doesn't change much. It's a smaller project, uh, around 50k um, followers on Twitter. And they are requesting, uh, I mean, comparing to Uniswap, that is requesting almost 70 million bucks. These folks are requesting only one, uh, 150,000 per year. You know, it's still a lot of a lot of budget, but it's not as much as um, Uniswap. As you mentioned, it's a smaller scale project. Um, I have never used I have never used this uh, exchange, nor their pools, uh, nor their bridge. But yeah, they are aiming to do this, so. DAO may be coming. Yeah, I mean, it's well, and I think that the project itself was built by the DAO. In this case, they've yeah. created and they're asking for the DAO to recognize the foundation. Um, it's just, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic and it's up on there. Um, I believe, no, it says it's already up on, um, no, it's on their forum. Anyways, I don't know if people have used it before. It, it looks, again, it's like a uni v2 uh, front end swap and it's a swapper and they have, I'm not aware of any specific functionality of their DAP that is not, um, that is like unique only to it. They're, I'm sure, and I don't wanna say I'm sure, I it's highly likely that it's just my ignorance, but I don't know. Um, like I said, I kind of think if you're looking at, I have it up here on screen. I have their token, uh, the SYN token, and let's see, yeah. their liquidity is primarily on Uniswap. Um, they got like, yeah, I would guess across, they're on Coinbase, it looks like, all the liquidity. What are we yeah. talking about there? Um, they also have here, um, if you go to the analytics uh, yeah. tab yeah. on their webpage, you will see like the biome of their bridge, um, the total revenue. 70 million, it's not about revenue. Um, I don't know, you can you can also tweak and see the monthly data. It's a nice, it, I mean, this analytic tool is quite interesting. Yeah, man, I, I, uh, I like bridges. I, I'd, I'd love to get Billy on. So I got the, the DAP on screen, folks who are watching on YouTube, 1HTV uh, on YouTube. And, um, as you can see, what comes up first is just a, a swap that's, you know, it's similar to say Hopdot Exchange, now is similar to Connects, it's a standard swap. You also have, um, you have your, your DEX swap here, um, you can stake their token, and, and as, as, um, as Edu mentioned, you have the analytics. Um, I'd love to know what their bridge, like I know a little bit, I'm not a technician, people know me, know that, but I know a bit about, you know, the difference between Hop.Exchange and Connext, for example. Um, if there's somebody in the audience, and or maybe we get Billy up some time to explain, have like a round table on bridges where we can just get educated, Edu. But I don't know, for example, what the technical dif difference is between the Synapse Bridge and others. So I just want to say, given everything that's happened recently, we're on, uh, we're on chain, or sorry, we're on, we're on, we're broadcast right now. It's being recorded. Don't know who's going to watch it. Um, so we have to sort of layer in not only not financial advice, but not bridging advice. <laughs> like synapse um it looks totally you know trustworthy and they got a pretty fairly large market cap trade on coinbase.com etc um but uh you know it's always use at your own risk here check them out though um synapseprotocol.com and uh they're setting up foundation yeah go ahead Ed. Then, then you get the feeling that um every now and then or every month or every two months there's a new exchange bridge tool popping out that's my feeling yeah yeah, it's so the bridges are dead. Well, I still remember, man. Like, so a little over a year ago, it was April of 21, 
that I did like the first piece of video content for one hive, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, Solar's here. Dosh was on earlier. Like those two fellas were the guys who were, you know, leading Buzz at the time and, and Solar, I think, up until now. Um, I did a video, and with Mert, I did a video on uh, Connext. It's like the one hive. One Hive did the UI, I think, for their first bridge. So they've been around for over a year, but I would agree with your observation that it's sort of in the more recently that it seems like everybody's spun up a bridge or is talking a lot about it. Um, Gnosis Chain is talking about the Holy Grail bridges. And I don't know, maybe people have insight on this, but um, you know, a trustless bridge between Gnosis Chain and Mainnet. Um, don't ask me the technicals. I have no fucking idea. I've read it. My eyes glaze over and I can't. Like someone can help me understand it, <laughs> but a trustless bridge would be amazing. I, I guess we'll we'll have to see. Whoever gets that first, let's put it this way: if there is a race right now and people coming up with bridging projects, whoever gets to the trustless bridge first wins, in a sense. This is the race. I guess everyone is in our race. <laughs> All right. Um, so the next one it's um, the Bendao. So we have talked about this. This is uh, in Spanish, and Spanish listeners will understand the phrase. This is a culebron. This is like a tele this is like a Spanish soap opera, Hispanic soap opera on the on on development. <laughs> on chain. Um, say what? Said it's an on chain so soap opera. Sorry, go ahead, man. Yeah, that's okay. correct. So this has, this has, I mean, probably a lot of folks um, already know this. If not, uh, this is just a very long kind of um, story. But the short version of the story is that the Ben Dao, they basically uh, were providing, uh, they were lending money using your NFTs. That's the bottom line. And they got, they basically <laughs> got, um, short in liquidity and now they are basically for the people who hasn't paid uh the money that they borrow they are burn they are selling and auctioning um their nfts i'm listening to myself but it's all good um okay. so yeah basically that's that's the thing and the latest news on this is that the ben Dao founder has proposed an emergency changes to the protocol. And if the vote that this founder proposed uh, passes, there's a li high likelihood that around 600 plus liquidation actions for um, for clones, eggs, Azuki, Doodles, um, you know, the apes, all of these kind of things will be action. Will you, will you participate on a bid like this? Is, do you think it's a bit risky to engage into this kind of auctions? I mean, I guess this is a thrill of the hunt, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I hope I fixed the feedback issue for there. I mean, this is something I find interesting to watch in the telenovela sense, as you've described. But yeah, I I wouldn't, I per, this is personal, I don't touch this stuff with a 10-foot pole and gloves. I don't, I'm not, you know, like I don't know enough about the, the dynamics of the space. Um, in general, at this point, I think there's some seriously interesting cultural artifacts in the NFT art space, and it provides interesting on-ramp for like Web3, but there's a lot of chicanery and dumbassery in the end. I'm sorry, but like, yeah, I, I hope nobody gets hurt that's either listening or, or um, holds these NFTs. I know that there's an opportunity of some kind probably to exploit here and... Um, that's what we do best, man. People will find a way to make money off of this uh, liquidation opportunity. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, they. I mean, if you go to um, to their Twitter, you will see how, like, um, you know, they have it's, they have some explain, they have some tweets regarding like there's a guy who um, that sort of explain or thank them for for having their a back. I don't know. It's it feels like a little bit wonky. Um, <laughs> how they are sort of. I, I guess it's for the survival of the DAO. This sort of fast governance. Um, they they change the, the window of opportunity from forty eight hours to four hours, which is quite a heavy change. Um, so I don't know. 
they explain, for example, that the auction, uh, for those who are like interested in buying an ape, uh, it says that anyone can take part in the auction. Uh, the bid must be first, no less than the starting price. Second, higher than the previous bid plus 1% depth. And the first bidder will receive at least 0.2 if paid by the borrower as a penalty if the borrower repays within 48 hours. The highest bidder will get the collateral if the borrower doesn't repay the loan, and the bidder needs to deposit if to bid. And deposit uh, if would automatically be refunded in uh, wrap if when his slash her bid is not the highest bid. So it's it's tricky and it's complicated. Um, and they, of course, they have like a, have a link to their auction and what is available for auction. Um, so yeah, they even put like in value, uh, they have 476 in ETH uh, value. Um, they have different things from, and even it's, it's really good, let's say in a way, it's a from if you go to the bidding or auction webpage, you can see what well, could be your potential profit out of this. So it seems that the highest um, profit, let me, you can't, it's, it's, this is really funny, guys. I don't know if you are sharing this, then, but um, if you need the link, let me know. But you have everything. You have a clone X, um, and you have also the depth, like how much is O, and you, you can see like what will be the first bit bonus, and they have like a bunch of apes, basically, and mutants here um so yeah that i guess it's an interesting thing it's risky for folks who doesn't know much but i guess if you are aware of this kind of things you have a chance to get something quite valuable back to you yeah dude i i i don't know if i wanted an ape or whatever yeah i don't know it's it's i'd wait for whoever ends up holding it after here and then try to buy it another six months i don't know like who am I to, to time the market but I don't I mean ultimately correct me if I'm wrong but this type of issue occurs because of you know the leverage that has been taking on relative to the market value of the asset right in this case four apes so there are people who overestimated the value of those things like, I, I don't know. I have to get more context on adjustments, like, to the parameters here. We followed some of this in regular, like, DeFi lending protocols. I guess this, um, you know, NFT liquidity protocols are something more new or more recent. And if it can happen to the blue chips, right, in some sense it can happen to uh, to any NFT project. Um yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm all for the use of crypto assets, to, like borrowing against them, because I think they do have real market value. But as with anything else in crypto, clearly the <clears throat> market estimate for that value has changed quite dramatically in the last six to eight months. Yep, I agree. Um, so I'm sharing on the tweet here on Twitter, on a tweet, the link to the auction page, just in case anyone is curious enough to take a look at it. Um, hey, would you put that in so a, like a comment? on the show yeah. where are you okay sweet that, yeah um, look for it. i'll get it up that's what i just did um so yeah it's, it's just curious like for me it's just i mean i will i th i don't think i will ever have an ape uh, that's i i don't like the design um uh, i find the doodles cute i like the doodles doodles but the clone x i don't like the clone the clone x for me it's like a bad final fantasy kind of reinterpretation I don't like that this 3D design. Um, I do I do really like the doodle. So if anyone wants to give me a doodle, I will happily accept it. But yeah. So as you mentioned, I think the bottom line here is that basically the DAO is the the the, the Ben DAO is trying to survive. I mean they run out of they run out of ETH and they they didn't have any any on their treasury, so that's why they are actually basically liquidating and and actioning all these um, nfts the idea is still interesting they have the capacity to use your um nfts as collateral oh for sure and somebody's gonna nail it um again i 
yeah i i I keep in touch with the NFT stuff mostly at the tech level through Billy and others. Um, I haven't, my NFT, my digital JPEG holdings um, include like community art from Ron One Hive, um, Perky or Perchy, I forget his name. I'm going to find him here. He's like the one, of the, he's the guy for uh, Bankless. Like he's done a couple of pieces um, where one of them was like Dowville. Um, and he's, he publishes all his star mints it on rareable. Um, but like, I think, yeah, I, I love, and I love NFT art. If it's something that I don't feel like is, uh, if it's indie, to be honest, if it's not something that I feel like is overhyped, but like, if you're speculating for the shorter term, I mean, yeah, I, it, it seems someone's gonna, someone's gonna snap up these, um, I'm sure yep. it's apes. They're just waiting to see yeah, how yeah. The, it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Like that, that one, that won't last. Like a lot of these items won't last long without someone actually, you know, accessing it. Well, you know what happened to me the other day, which was really funny, not funny, but just odd was, um, that I realized people for whatever reason it was, um, the people sort of like, airdrop you or send you nfts to your wallet like um i i don't know i don't know how it happens i have no clue um but it happened because i saw my my wallet in other like chains and i, I had to, i had nfts in other chains that i have zero clue i never bought any and i guess it's a form of spam or or something along those lines but it was really weird in general yeah, I mean, this is so. What you're actually commenting on here, I think, my opinion is really important because um, it, you know, it relates to soulbound tokens. Um, so, like, it's not just if they send you a transferable token, but what if somebody sends something to your wallet that you literally can't remove? Um, and then, it, more recently, with, I mean, with tornado cash, right? Dusting of wallets. Right. We talked about this, I and mean, so. Um, yeah, the part of the way in my understanding, there's obviously going to move is this stuff's going to move in different directions with ZK and all that. But like right now, um, I mean, I know you could probably set up a wallet where you'd, you'd have a blacklist, but in other words, it's, it's very easy to send your wallet something if someone wants to, and it's pretty right. difficult to unless you're to set up a full bright idea civil resistance of some kind which maybe that's a project that already exists or somebody's working on but yeah somebody can send you whatever the fuck they want it's very hard to like prevent that from happening um in an inherently open space right um yep yeah yeah it's, it's shady anyways all right shall we move to the next one Yeah, man, let's do it. You want to hit, uh, what are we on now? TBC or TBCC? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, TBC. I mean, we are, we are, it's false today. We are hitting a bunch of unknown or less known um, spaces, protocols, and so on. That, that happens with the Synapse protocol um, exchange uh, bridge. That happens with the Bendao. And now is a turn of TBCC. So I had to make a little bit of a digging <laughs> to, to understand was TBCC and basically it seems that TBCC it's uh it's like an exchange but it happens on like it seems like an Asian kind of um exchange and uh, trading trading space and they call themselves the most profitable and reliable liquidity pool. That's quite a statement that they have over there. And Basically, they they explain on the proposal that the proposal started on August 21 and will end on August 24th that their community is creating a decentralized autonomous organization uh, that is called the TVCC DAO, so they can manage the TVCC ecosystem and develop web three technology. They go into explaining a little bit more in there in detail. I have no clue if this is an official um tvcc kind of endeavor because i didn't see any um any information on the twitter or or anything related to the dao so it's a little bit on sort of the um on the shadows to understand um 
what's going on there because I didn't see the snapshot vote uh, on on their Twitter and the Twitter is quite disconnected. Like the last update was in July of 21. Um, so they're not very active here. Um, but yeah, have you ever heard about TBCC? No, I, I haven't actually. I, I did go to their website here though and clicked on exchange and it gave me some message that I'm, oops. Okay, I muted myself so you weren't getting feedback. Can you hear me? I don't... <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I have the web page up here on, on uh, YouTube and I never heard of this project before, but I clicked on the exchange button and it took me like a message on screen that I was trying to go someplace I wasn't supposed to be. So I tend to, I, I turned around and went back to the way it, it is uh, tbcctoken.com. It appears this is, it shares the same logo as uh, on Snapchat. Yes. Yeah. So that's the shady part. Um, because that's why I'm hesitant to understand if this is the same as the the other page because it's weird why would you have um a separate for a separate web page for the token and a separate sort of web you know what i mean it seems two different things but it's the same one they have the same logo um you know sort of stuff but for some reason there are two different pages so i don't know um it looks odd to me i don't know what do you think even though I mean yeah. they have on the on their snapshot they have eighty k members on their snapshot. See, this That's is a lot yeah. of people. They um and go to their Twitter page at TBC. You're muted. Oh, see, having to manage too many buttons. My my next task is to try to get support if he's willing to help me get like all of this through one button. I just want to like press one button instead of four. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, okay, so like, yeah, I actually have the Twitter page up here on YouTube as well, TBCC underscore EX, I think it's exchange. Um, yeah, folks, take a check a look at this. It's BEP uh, 20 is founded in DeFi summer, it looks like, on Binance Smart Chain. So, yeah, I don't know much more about it. Other than that, it's it's possible. They have about 4,200 followers here and obviously an active snapshot. And then you know, obviously you can spam up the snapshot if you really want to, as we've seen in the past, um, unless you choose not to. There is a bright ID integration with snapshot, by the way. I was reminded about that from uh, Philip last week. But yeah, take a look at this. If you're, again, I don't know anything. I'm not necessarily endorsing this, obviously, but it's, uh, they exist. I'm not really sure where to direct people here, but um, you can take a look at their snapshot to figure out what they're up to at least, you know. Yeah, no, in this case, it's just the fact that they are going to launch, um, they're going to launch a DAO. And um, with that, a token, if it's, if it's true, just keep an eye on that. Um, they seem to, to be making statements on, on them. So I don't know, just, just information, throwing information out there. Um, by no means, I would do anything or link my wallet to this secondary web page. <laughs> just in case um you know it is not the real one but just information yeah, and we can well. we are we are on the topic of the bridges so we can go to balancer do you want to talk about balancer yeah let's do it man and i i just to touch on what you said previously there too it's like you know if you have a burner wallet or something like that and obviously so have they dropped the token yet or not i didn't hear that part at no least. no okay so the, the, the snapshot the snapshot is just to um to launch a token and to launch the DAO, basically got it so there is an opportunity for an airdrop <laughs> Who knows? maybe there is <laughs> all right yeah. so go for it man uh, we got Balancer, and this is a proposal that started on um, August the 18th, and it ended yesterday, um, August the 21. And it basically, uh, this proposal suggests that the Balancer Treasury use 40,000 ball uh, to enable fast, cheap, and secure bridging between Ethereum, Arbitrum, Polygon, and Optimism via a cross protocol. And the motivation is that the balancer currently is using multi-chain for this bridging. Due to the design of the multi-chain, ball tokens are getting stuck in destination chains 
due to the bridging flows and those not allowing users to easily go back and forth between L1 and L2 and between L2s. Um, they explain, they ex offer some examples that they, if you want to bridge uh, 100 ball uh, from Optimism to Ethereum, the charge to the user is 12% and they only get 88 tokens on the other side. If Vol was on Acros, which is the platform they are aiming to, to implement, um, if Vol was on Acros, the charge will be 0.12%, which is 90% lower. And the user will get 99 Vol on Ethereum instead of 88 Vol offered by Multichain. Uh, and they keep sort of um, explaining that Acros recently launched a referral program where referrers and referees are rewarded in a CX token. And currently the reward rate, it's a 40 to 80% of breaches fees being uh, rebated back to the referrer referee. And it's, uh, it's a very long sort of proposal. They of course explain that they have risks and these risks are uh, the typical uh, quote unquote, smart contract risks. Um, they also proposed, uh, they, sorry, they also shared the link to the audits for ACROSS. And they also explained that the UMA optimistic oracle is used to settle any disputes if slash when they occur um, and so on. So I don't know, it seems very simple. It's just a very long proposal uh, that it's here. It's so far passing with 87%, it already passed, my apologies. Uh, with an 87.87%, 87 511 uh, V-Ball on this proposal. So, yeah. Um, and by the way, uh, it says also here that the Risk Labs Treasury has offered to provide the loan of 10K Ball tokens for the real layer. So the proposal has been modified to only request 40K Ball to be deposited into a cross-ball LP from Balancer Treasury. So there you go. It's actually this is very interesting. Um, it, it seems as though they're they're preferring uh, an alternative to their status quo bridging alternative, and uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd spoken with that before, but we might explore that affiliate affiliate link option uh, even for the show here. I think Across is a great project, and they have a unique way of trying to bootstrap their um, you know, their usership to launch their token and their DAO. Um, yeah, this is this so this is specifically to create this LP pool that enables the bridging to occur, right? That's that's what it seems like is uh, at the core of the proposal. Edu, would you agree? Yes, I agree. And uh, the thing here is that of course they are they are sort of hinting um, the opportunity from uh, the referral program, and and that the fact that it seems that the token used on this uh, new bridge, on the across bridge, will have a, a token that has not been launched yet or something along those lines. So there may be also an opportunity there. Sweet. You're, you're excellent at identifying those, uh, those good opportunities there, Edu. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we will see. I mean, this, I don't know, um, I haven't used across uh, by no means, but it just seemed interesting. So there is that. And we can finish maybe with PyDAO. Yeah, let's do it, man. That sounds great. Um, so as some of you might know, again, this is up on one uh, HTV on YouTube. Um, we, we cover general news, um, and specifically like two DAOs. And um, one of the things I noticed at the beginning between Uniswap and Synapse was sort of this trend and um, this trend towards foundation creation for the sake of efficiency around specific DAO, you know, operations. Um, and then more recently we have this big trend of, um, well, you have this sanctioning of tornado cash. So without going down that rabbit hole, I'd love to hear what people think about that. People in the audience, people either on YouTube or, um, or here on Twitter space, we should probably, 
um, have an episode dedicated to that and get people who are really smart on the law side, um, as well as a code side to get together and chat about it. I mean, there's so many different dimensions, but one and, and like ripple effects, right? So one of the knock on effects of this action by the U S federal government is, um, the sanctioning or the, um, yeah, the integration of blacklists into DeFi front ends. Right. So now I am not, again, a technical person. If some of my explanation of this story about PyDAO is uh, inaccurate, I, please, I'd love to be corrected. And then this is not specifically about PyDAO. This is a larger conversation that is happening on crypto Twitter as well. And so my layman self um, has sort of tried to understand it the best I can. Um, and it's essentially like this OFAC, which is the uh, Office of Foreign Asset Control, O F A C, okay, is the sort of. That's the acronym for the government agency, otherwise known as OFAC, right? So this is now crypto Twitter's knowledge of this U.S. government agency. I don't know if I like it because it might cede too much power, <laughs> but like ultimately it is a very powerful branch of the U.S. Treasury Department. And ultimately their mission, OFAC's mission is to eliminate money laundering. Like they're actually out there to try and keep people safe from those people who would use money to do bad stuff in the world. So I'm, and, and this is a part because I grew up in the DC area that like, I don't have a knee jerk reaction to like US government bad, because frankly, I know too many people who are like lifelong bureaucrats and they're just normal fucking people out there trying, they're like doing their job, right? And it's, it's, it's easy to attribute malice and like a grant, trust me, the one thing I can tell you is the US federal government has no grand plan to destroy crypto. That is retarded. Good luck. Okay. They don't sit around and like plan our demise. Trust me. Like it's, it's just, it can be much more easily explained, but I, without going down again, ranting on this, OFAC is, um, they have issued a, a list of wallet addresses that have been flagged for whatever reason for interacting. I'm guessing they are now, this is me editorializing. I'm guessing they're essentially whale addresses that interacted with Tornado.Cash on mainnet. That's my guess, okay? So they have a list, and this is their shit list, right? This is the oh fuck list, right? And this list is, you know, publicly available, okay? It's, it's a government document, and certain projects are faced with the dilemma over whether or not to basically put their front end, meaning not the smart contracts, but the front end that you know normal people access the smart contracts with, whether or not they're essentially going to censor, this is no longer permissionless. Now that you talk about permissionlessness as a value in decentralized finance, all right? Well, it's not my opinion, and I'm not taking a position on this per se, but I think it is factually true that if you implement a, a blacklist if you put the oh fuck list on your front end, you are no longer permissionless, right? Not my opinion. I don't think that's my opinion. That can be a good or a bad thing. And I certainly empathize with the reasons projects decide to do this. I'm not pointing the finger at PyDAO here on the screen and saying, shame, shame. I'm saying incompetence in the US government bureaucracy has put projects in an impossible position and this is an example of it. A Pi DAO is, uh, I haven't been directly involved in this community, but it's, this is a DAO. Um, it's a true DAO launched like, you know, last year I say true DAO and that it's really is community driven. Um, they've experimented with different styles of uh, like index co-op would be a sim similar kind of project where they're doing like index tokens for different groupings of DeFi projects. And probably, you know, they moved on you know, to more complex implementations but ultimately they are voting and right now so let's see it's went to an off-chain vote and uh it just started two days ago it will go till next week and right now you actually have quite a nice distribution so you're seeing about yeah you know, uh, a little over two-thirds for it but a solid one third um, against the move to uh to gate the front end for this DeFi protocol. And that's uh, that's the idea. What do you think, man?
Hey there, Daniel. Hi, uh, I should check and make sure you can hear me okay. The audio just got really bad for you. Okay, let me... Can you hear my voice all right? Yeah. I can hear you just fine. I hope it didn't... I hope you can still hear me okay. If, uh, if there's some issue, let me know. How are you doing, Daniel? Great, great. I'm, I'm doing great. Um, I, uh, I joined this conversation, uh, I can't say selfishly entirely, but maybe a little bit selfishly. Uh, a friend of mine and I have been talking about uh, this issue uh, extensively and um, having, having a protocol or anyone, you know, gate a permissionless system, it, it doesn't sit well, right? It, it, it goes against uh, really a lot of the ethos behind what makes this reasonable. And, uh, you know, I, I think the right approach here is to not, not permission uh, a permissionless system. However, let's be realistic. We also don't want to fund, uh, you know, actions that uh, anyone deems to be, you know, this, this type of, uh, you know, these types of grievous actions. Um, you know, whether, you know, everyone that's on OFAC, or at least the majority of people that are in OFAC are supposed to be bad people, uh, you know, bad people that the average person probably wouldn't want to interact with, not even accidentally. Um, so one of the questions, uh, that we came up with was, is there a way for people, individuals, you know, wallet holders to be able to opt in to such a, such a permissioning, uh, to say, you know what, as an individual, I do not want to act, interact with these lists. And as an individual, uh, I have the option to potentially interact with these lists. Uh, not that not that anyone should in, in these cases, but uh, when we're talking about something like Tornado Cash, which is not inherently bad itself, uh, it, it maybe makes sense to to question that. So um, my my shill here is just that we're going to be pitching a Gitcoin grant to try to develop a user controlled uh, you know gating, and uh, we we think that's important because uh, having Anything be permissioned by a third party um, just doesn't doesn't work in a permission permissionless system. Um, it, it's a great idea to not give money to terrorism, but uh, that that doesn't mean you know we should we should give up uh, ideas behind things just because you know one entity decided that another entity was bad. Doesn't mean it's not worth honoring that, uh, but we we want to be sure we're not um, you know starting down a slippery slope here. I agree. I agree with that, Daniel. And I think that, well, I mean, if you apply to to the Gitcoin grant or or something along those lines, but it's shared the results of um, the product or or the conversations that you were having with your friends, so we can all also learn from from it. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to just for a second also um, just respond because I I do think is well, first of all just for everybody who's on the call. Ted, um, it, uh, you're. Am I muted? Your audio, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on, man. I'm sorry. Um, so, false apologies that we are trying to figure out how to um, solve some of these audio situations. This is the second time, so bear with us. We are going to make it. Daniel, what, like, um, what is your area of, of work, and if I may ask? <laughs> Um, it depends on the timeline. Uh, I've been a technologist for the last couple of decades, and more recently, uh, I'm enthralled with uh, you know all things crypto, Web three, DAOs. Um, I'm I, I'm trying to learn as much as I can, and I'm hoping to kind of launch my own thing at some point here. But um, I would say entrepreneur, test, test one, technologist, uh, test, wide test. range of technologies. Okay. And uh, you know, hoping to hoping to do something with that in the in the crypto space. Nice. I'm still looking forward for looking forward to to what you come up with. Uh, and and again, if you have uh, down the lane any anything to share, uh, don't hesitate to send us uh, a message. Absolutely. My my interest is in you know helping small farmers in particular. Um, I think the Dow model has some possibilities there. Uh, you know, as a cooperative, it's kind of like the, you know, the the original cooperative in a lot of ways is is uh, agricultural needs. Um, but yeah, absolutely, I'll 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 as things develop. Yeah, I agree. The Dow's are like the new, um, you know, the the 
a 21st century cooperative uh, model sort of revamped and adapted. What is interesting is, I, I, and I hope I find, I will find that at some point, it's how, like, if you, like, I would love to see a DAO, like a Web3 DAO linked to a real life agricultural cooperative. That for me would be like a fantasy, if possible. Oh, all right. Well, then I'll, I'll be making dreams come true here, hopefully. Looking forward to that. Um, Ted, how is your audio coming? Well, we'll only know when I speak. Is it still horrible? Yes, it is still robotic. Okay, well, I got to ask this. Did that <laughs> Maybe less, less happen? Less horrible. Let me, let me, hold on. <laughs> now it's better. Now it's better. It's almost like, well, so let me tell you maybe. I So I have the, <laughs> I have the mixer and I have my mute button here in the Twitter space. So I'm toggling back and forth. And I think what happens is there's some latency because it's also being sent to YouTube. Anyways, I'm sitting here making excuses yeah, for my yeah. machine. But if it's you're better getting, now, it's okay now? You're getting... <laughs> no? Nope, you're getting caught. Uh, hey. You're getting caught, so... It's a lot of so digital I'm... artifacts, like it's uh, maybe a bandwidth or even if you're using anything with a battery, sometimes a low battery will do that. But it's, uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, I mean, Ted, if you feel like, I mean, we can um, finish the, the stream for today. Um, and maybe if you are going to re if you're going to retake it, um, restart a little bit um, your systems and see if your audio come back better. I'm, I'm going to log on with my, my own like account. I'm still going to truck, man. If you got to go roll out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with my personal account. It'll be cleaner sounding. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much, everyone who joined today. Uh, Ted will be in a few seconds coming back. Um, so thank you so much for everyone who joined. We basically every week, every Monday, we go through some key point uh, key points across the Web3 space. We cover from uh, governance aspects to um, you know interesting news that we think could be alpha for some folks. And the idea is that uh, we provide um, information from sources of truth like Snapshot or, or Masari. So if you are into that, please don't hesitate to join and I will look forward to see you next Monday. Ted, let's try it out. All right, All right. I'm thinking maybe you, can, thinking maybe you can hear me now. Can okay, you let me know if you can hear me? I'm gonna pause this guy. <laughs> yes, I can hear you well. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, great, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk about just talk about a few things from this channel then, and, and you, you have a good, good excellent sir. week, sir. So it's good to chat. I do. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Okay. Okay. So Everybody, I'm gonna try to now. People just do this. just do this going forward. forward. Um, Daniel, is this Daniel? Is this much better? better? I mean, me can you hear me significantly? Significantly better. better. Yep. That's. Uh, okay. that seems like you resolved whatever it was. Yep. Okay. I, I just wanted, I, I just wanted to return to one of your points earlier. I think that so it, it's, if, I'm so if I'm understanding correctly, um, the tool you're suggesting, you're suggesting would, would more or less offer opt-in opt compliance. compliance. So, like, so like, if I have TWL well study tonight, um, want to make sure, want to make sure I'm not interacting with sanctioned addresses, then that's my opt-in opt rather than the protocol, protocol itself. Exactly. Exactly. The you know the 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 holy grail of this would be something like. You know, OFAC themselves even being able to publish a list that could be consumed directly by this tool. But realistically, we're thinking it'll probably be more curated lists, whether those are, you know, other organizations like, I don't know, maybe the EFF decides to have, you know, the prevent you from funding terrorist lists without being overbearing, you know, however, however that is. We could also see kind of non custodial list management solutions where maybe you engage with a third party specifically for the point of having them manage such lists for you. And you could kind of, you know, have a slider with that third party to determine your, your risk or your, you know, how restrictive you want to be. Uh, and then as an individual yourself also, right, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you, there's just certain people you don't want to interact with or something, you know, whatever that is. But the point being is that you as the wallet holder uh, have the you know, complete and irrevocable authority to determine uh, who you can and cannot receive, you know, interact with, um, you know, for this related contract, right? So um, it's, it's completely up to you. 
as an individual. And then that's this way of say, I don't know, uh, an entity is really well behaved, but in a year or five or whatever it is, adding political opponents to their restricted list. Well, it's your delegation. You can revoke that delegation and, and do as you please. I like that a lot, man. Very, very cool. What was the project name? Just so we can direct people there and I myself will try to <laughs> show for you. Yeah, man. You know, you know, um, we we uh, are literally today submitting for Gitcoin grants. We've been discussing this over the last few weeks. We don't even have a name. I, I might even I might even suggest that, uh, you know, the people in this room could could pick a name. I don't think we're too particular about what it's called. We just, I guess, need to call it something, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. I um, well, I encourage you to check out the the One Hive uh, community. There's some really you know, smart people uh, in and around the Hive there. So a lot of overlap with with Gitcoin, including in the FDD and all of that good stuff. So um, yeah, I'd have to think, man. I'd have to like <laughs> think on ideas, but I'm I'm all for it because I definitely. Um, well, what like I, my, what I, yeah, go ahead. What I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but let me throw a working title out there, and we're going to roll with this just for something to do right now. This could change in some time. I don't know, but let's go with Ops List. O P T L I S T. Yeah, it's clean. Two syllables, pretty much. Yeah. See. Anybody has an idea, you can always leave it in chat. Solar's here. Who else we got? Well, GM to Rusty, login, support uh, Rohek, others. Um... I don't... Obviously, you don't have opt-in list, but it's the optional list, right? So, works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are there other folks that... Uh... So, are you... Uh... Technician, are you coding this up yourself? Are you uh, who else are you working with uh, in this space here? Yeah, so I've got a buddy. Um, I'm not even sure what his Twitter handle is. Let me see if I can find it for you here. Um, who I went to East Denver with. Uh, we we became a finalist for a actually agricultural inspired project. Uh, Farm kudos uh, was was an attempt at uh, basically. I can't. I, I wouldn't go as far as soulbound tokens, but it was kind of inspired by some early thinking around that. And uh, we've been in contact since then. And um, you know, obviously, we're as shocked as anyone else when we heard about what's happening here with this list and Tornado Cash. And uh, we're thinking about, you know, is there a way that it's reasonable to implement something like this without, you know, seceding uh, um, privacy? Right. I mean, the Nobody really wants to fund terrorism, uh, but we also don't want to give up privacy, you know, in the name of, you know, preventing, you know, funding of terrorism. Yeah, and I, I, to be honest with you, I'd love to, I mean, I don't know how much time you have now, but um, if not today, then another day, yeah, and really chat and sort of dig in on this, because my, you know, my perspective on this at a high level is that, you know, you have government bureaucrats that have got you know, people always up the chain of command telling them to do shit, do something, right? And, uh, you know, I mean, look at the last six months. I mean, <laughs> if it's sort of risen to the level of um, if you have a, if you have hundreds of millions or more that are, if this is possible to exploit and take those funds, like you, you're, you are attracting the interest of state actors right around the world. And yeah, I don't think that DPRK is some convenient scapegoat. I think that they're actually <laughs> organized actors that will get wind of that and then like pursue it, right? So in a sense, like there is just, it's, for me, it's easier to attribute this to the need to do something and the inevitable overreach that will be walked back in court or whatever, but developing the tools to offer an alternative that can then be wrapped in an actual policy solution. Like that to me is I'm really interested in, in just yeah, hearing more about that and, and, and your thoughts around that, Ben. Well, happy to have you. I mean, I, I do have a little bit of time right now, but uh, happy to dig into this farther and, uh, you know, have more people as part of this discussion as well, right? Um, you know, we're not yep. thinking yep. that we're we're like the be all end all decision makers here. We're just trying to hammer on this and make a difference. Um, 
you know, the, the idea of kind of, um, you know, industry posed solutions here is, um, you know, something that we think is very important. I mean, uh, as you said, there's going to be a response to this type of thing uh, when the government feels that they have a role or a responsibility to step in and do something. Um, you know, and, and in this case, their solution is to say, well, you as individuals are, are so bad at being trusted, we're going to have to shut down a, a protocol and, you know, in its entirety. And that's, that's like a really ugly, heavy handed approach. And even if yes, it goes through the Plinko machine. And at the end of the day, they say, well, I guess it's, I guess we can take that off the list and we'll just sanction the individual, you know, uh, individuals addresses or something along those lines. It's not really the right solution. You know, we, uh, we don't want to go down this road. What we'd much rather say is have them tell us, you know what, this is a great solution in the same way that you can't hand a briefcase full of money to a terrorist. You've done some work to make sure that you're not inadvertently handing some money away. So anyways, yeah. Very interesting, man. I'd, I'd love to get a, a panel together and and uh, and dig in on that. We should, we should definitely find a time. And I know GR15 is coming up here soon. Um, so uh, if, or I guess once, if you have any documentation or anything you want um, us, me, to share around, feel free to DM me. And uh, let's find a time, maybe a, another Monday, to get together and just dig on this specific topic. Um, it could be in and around GR15, right, if you wanted to do that. But uh, I'm definitely down, Daniel. I'm down. You. I'm glad you, uh, you requested the mic, sir. It's good to meet you. Likewise. Really appreciate the opportunity. All right, everybody. Well, I know it is approaching the bottom of the hour here. We'll go ahead and wrap things up just for this week, and I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. Again, 1HTV on YouTube. We're trying to grow that channel a bit there. We stream there all of our shows. Um, so Monday on the regular, Tuesday is bi-weekly. Billy will be back next Tuesday evening um, for his late-night show, Eastern. I guess late-night show. It's at 9.30 Eastern, um, and he breaks down all the latest hacks and news from a developer perspective, um, and I believe this Thursday is going to be um, Sea of Hertz. So Miguel was with us. If he's not with us right now, Miguel will be running that show as he does every two weeks. It's a Spanish language show. Um, I'm not sure he's going to have on this week. He hasn't shared that with me, but he's always got a great guest from Web3 to come on um, and speak to uh, his audience as well as a second hour that is all indie music um, that he's produced largely uh, himself and communities and using this as a bridge to bring people in the music community over to Web3. So check that out on Thursday. That will be at 6 p.m. Eastern. All these will be, of course, streamed again to 1HTV on YouTube. we got a great group of experimenters and contributors here. Appreciate all y'all for tuning in. Uh, feel free to retweet and share. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, and we'll see you guys in the next show. Have a good rest of your day and rest of the week. GM, everybody.